Well, Britt, let's recap where we are tonight. Four shifts in our latest scorecard, and they all fell in favor of Donald Trump. New Hampshire moved from leaning Democrat to toss up, Ohio from toss up to leaning GOP, and both Indiana and Missouri from leaning GOP to solidly GOP. With those in mind today, if the vote was today, Clinton would get 283 votes, Trump 192. The toss ups, the yellows, they account for 63 votes. But not so fast in Michigan. Check it out. It is worth 16. We've got it as light blue, meaning it's leaning Democrat. But Trump is now fighting to be the very first Republican to carry that state in 28 years. He's holding a rally there tonight. Governor Mike Pence will be there Monday. Trump himself will reportedly return for yet another late night rally Monday as well. Clinton will be there Monday as well as President Obama. So why all the last minute A-list attention? Well, the Clinton team says it's always been part of the plan to flood that state leading up to the election because there's no early voting. So both sides have to light a fire under their supporters, make sure they actually turn out on Election Day. And the Trump team says now it is seeing an opportunity there. All right, here's another interesting wrinkle in this electoral college vote. At least one elector in Washington state says he will refuse to vote for Clinton even if she wins the state's popular vote, she's expected to. A second elector there in that same state also hinting he may do the same thing. Both had been Sanders supporters. They are not saying who they'd vote for or if they'll vote at all. Britt? Shannon, thank you. Mm -hmm. As we've noted, the Real Clear Politics average of national polls shows the race a virtual toss up. But most seasoned analysts still see Hillary Clinton as a clear favorite. Partly it's the electoral map that Shannon just outlined. But partly it's the polls within the Real Clear Politics average. Let's talk about them with Larry Sabato, head of the University of Virginia's esteemed Center for Politics. Hi, Larry. Um, I hey, think you'll Greg. agree that I, I think you'll agree that the electoral map uh, seems to favor Secretary Clinton, but it's still close enough that Trump could pull it out uh, with a big day on Tuesday. But let's talk a little bit about this average of polls because, you know, th they show the race tighter than most analysts seem to think. And, uh, you know, let's just take a look if we can. I think we may be able to look, look uh, on the screen at those polls and give a sense of the margins that, uh, that the polls within it provide. Do we have that, uh, that electoral map? But it seems not to be coming up. Well, Larry, you're familiar with the, there's one poll in the Real Clear Politics two candidate <coughs> average that, uh, that has consistently favored Trump. That is the poll from the, uh, the University of Southern California and the Los Angeles Times. It's not the same kind of poll that most other pollsters are doing. Could you explain the difference? Uh, sure. It's uh, a very complicated poll methodologically. And if I go into detail, Brett, you're going to lose your millions of viewers. So I'm going to avoid doing that. But I am going to tell you this. The methodologists in polling regard that particular survey as being an outlier, and I agree with them. I do not think it's representative. I do not think it will be borne out on Tuesday night. Now, uh, if you had been able to show that chart of polls, it would have confirmed what all of your viewers already believe, which is right. that polls are all over the lot. Uh, you have to know what you're looking for, and while I do this, support uh, polling averages, uh, what? Hold on a second, Larry. Just let me let me, let me just that, that graphic has finally, to our great relief, appeared. Oh, there it is. And as you can see okay. by looking at it, yeah, there it goes. Um, the the polls generally, you can see that in only one poll in the nine that are part of the real clear politics average is Donald Trump ahead, and that is the one we've been talking about, the L.A. Times USC tracking poll, which has Trump up five. Uh, which sets it well apart from the others. And as you point out, you don't trust the methodology. And I think part of the reason for that is that it is, it is a very large sample to be sure, which is usually a good thing in a poll. Uh, it's likely voters, which is also a good thing, as you can see there, LV. Uh, but it is, a, it is the same group of people every, that they go back to time and again. And it, it is consistently throughout this entire cycle favored Donald Trump by several points. He's always ahead, farther ahead in this poll or, far, or less far behind than he is in any other. So that may, and of course, if that poll were not part of this, uh, the average would be quite different. Go ahead, Larry. I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, that's perfectly all right, because you've made a good point. Go back four years. What was the real clear politics average showing four years ago? And I'm not criticizing them. I like them a great deal. Uh, but they're, they're uh, uh, a week ahead of the election. They had Romney up nearly one percentage point over President Obama. 
President Obama won by four percentage points. So in essence, they were off by five percentage points, which was six to seven million votes. That's a lot of votes. But they were, they were closer than many of the individual surveys. So that's why I say polling averages are not perfect, but they're better than the alternative. But if you force me, as your producer did, uh, to pick a couple of polls that are probably more representative, I, I would pick the NBC Wall Street Journal poll as one of them. Why? Because it's an old poll. They are used to doing these surveys under difficult circumstances, and it goes back a long way. They have a lot of history. The other poll I would recommend to people uh, is the Economist YouGov poll because they have shown remarkable stability in this race. And I've said time and time again that these surveys that hop from plus 13 for one candidate to five, plus five for the other candidate, this is ridiculous. Uh, the vast majority of people knew for whom they were going to vote at the beginning of the general election campaign. You couldn't have a, a more stark difference than Trump and Clinton. So the YouGov uh, economist poll has been very stable. They've been about plus three for Clinton for quite some time. And I think it, it has the stability that I look for in a good survey. All right, Larry Sabato, very helpful. Thanks for coming on all this fall. Uh, I'll, I'll well, see you, you on Brett. down the road, buddy, and all the best. I, I look forward to it, look forward to right. it, Brett. Thank you.